<clears throat> we can see your screen. See a slide? Yep, we see slides. Very good. Thanks so much, Megan. Um, my name's Les. I'm uh, presenting from Wurundjeri country, always was, always will be Wurundjeri country. Um, I'm talking about a taxonomy or vocabulary project that I led a few, not too many years ago now at um, the Analysis and Policy Observatory. I barely have time to explain what apo.org.au is, but do visit it sometime. It's a digital library with policy information. It's got a great search interface. Um, I'm going to be talking about a vocabulary project there as a case study. Um, and then I'm going to offer some reflections about what um, about things like tools and governance and and techniques you know that we, we encountered and used during the project. I guess just quickly, the, the short answer to the question how the public taxonomy was made was really in that photograph there. Um, that was the team when I was there, and um, it, it was really I think just a quick reflection is that vocabularies and vocabulary projects really do impact every corner of an organisation. Um, you can probably imagine how vocabs and changes to vocabs impact the uh, sort of website development sort of area. It's also editors and catalogers, people who sort of create the the value in these digital libraries. It's also leadership. Um, I think Amanda might even be here today, um, but really you need to get leaders involved in defining the scope and the purpose of a vocabulary. It's important to have that sort of buy-in, um, but even marketing as well. Um, and we'll see that, that um, vocabularies used at APA were used to organise, uh, you know, marketing products sort of thing. So everyone was impacted and everyone helped me with this project and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, the reason that we were doing the project was because of a, uh, a, a project uh, called the Link Semantic Platforms, which was an ARC funded um, project involving um, a few agencies. Um, and one of the objectives of the project was to make APO taxonomies shareable. In fact, I think it was actually taxonomy in the, in the singular, um, but we'll see uh, how interesting that situation was about the pl pl plurality of the vocabularies. Um, I'm going to dive straight into this slide, which is, uh, this is not a screenshot, this is actually a mock-up that I've created, but this is a true representation of something I encountered when I first started working at APO. So imagine that you're looking at a description of, so some metadata and a description of an article, and you like the look of what you see and you want to explore and find some other things that are similar. And on the right hand side, you've got some links, but of course you've found that you've got the word economics three times under different headings. So um, when I when I encountered this situation, um, my first thought was, well, there's some significant usability issues here, no matter what's going on behind these, these, these uh, fields. But the other thing that occurred to me was, I'm sure there's an interesting story behind each of these fields. And it was part of my job was to uncover and document that story and to um, get requirements out of that investigation. Um, did remind me slightly of the, uh, the multi-hall problem, but um, that's a digression. Um, so, oh, excuse me, I've skipped ahead. First of all, subject, what did subject mean? Well. It was a subset of the uh, the faceted application of subject terms or FAST. Um, and it was really there in the APO database because it, it had been sort of adopted after a metadata harvest. Um, luckily, the FAST IDs had been retained and that's an important, um, that's an important factoid for this um, presentation. Um, and also APO had a seat in the, the FAST working group. So APO was actually contributing directly into the working group for the development of FAST. Um, secondly, broad subjects. Now, the broad subjects was a, uh, a short list, 15 or actually 13 topics at the time. Um, and it was really there to address a system limitation where it was difficult to pull out a top level from the subjects. I think mainly because the subjects was itself a subset of another vocabulary. Um, I noticed that some alignment work had been done to align the, um, the broad subjects with the fields of research, which is an Australian research classification system. 
um, and that I, I had to continue some of that alignment work as well. Um, and the broad subjects were very important in driving uh, marketing, uh, uh, such as uh, newsletters and uh, certain parts of the website and things and generation of icons and things like this. And um, last keyword. So, so what what was a keyword? It was um, essentially it was a term that wasn't was not in fast, but we needed the term. Um, it's not entirely true. Some of the terms that were in the keywords were also in, in FAST. Um, but these were the terms that the editors came up with. So the people doing the cataloging came up with these terms and they stored them in the database as well. And I thought it was quite interesting that the keywords were referred to internally as an uncontrolled vocabulary. And I thought that was interesting. So the FAST terms were regarded as controlled. The keywords were regarded as uncontrolled. And I took the editors on a little bit of a journey there, exploring the idea that maybe there was uh, different types of control that were being applied. And there was certainly rules um, involved in um, how the editors decided what was a keyword and what wasn't. And I um, sort of led the move to document those rules and to refine those rules as well, taking them away from this idea that there was a controlled and an uncontrolled vocabulary. So uh, to, make, to make a taxonomy shareable, there are a few things I needed to do. And um, so I've, I've got this in five steps. Um, and uh, I just want to quickly mention that uh, when I created this slide, I asked um, Microsoft PowerPoint to come up with some icons and it came up with a dinosaur for the, uh, the third step. I can only imagine that's because of the Thesaurus Rex cartoon that probably many of you are familiar with. I thought I'd leave the dinosaur in because I thought it was funny. Um, but I'm going to take you through these one at a time. First of all, improve the, improve the keywords uh, taxonomy. The reason I wanted to start with the keywords is because that is basically where the value was that APO had created. APO created um, this word stock by um, keeping these keywords, and this is over several years, yeah? So this was APO's intellectual property, if you like. Um, the, um, the only problem with the keywords was that it had a very long tail of low use terms. So um, many terms that had only been used once or twice. And that's not surprising because synonyms were not being controlled, hierarchy was not being established. And the tools for looking up the terms in the database were a bit clunky. So it was very difficult to keep track of what had been added and where there were duplications in the, whether labels or meaning. Um, so I worked with the data scientists at Swinburne, Yonbin Kang, um, and a very clever guy who uh, used something called a subsumption method. This was some artificial intelligence method to uh, identify co-occurrence between terms. And uh, we had that checked by APO editors and manual checking of the artificial intelligence and training the AI. Um, and this, this helped me to clean up the tail. This helped me to find uh, many synonyms and to... And to as, assert those synonym relationships. Um, wrong way, sorry. Secondly, once that cleaning up of the long tail was done, it was time to merge the vocabularies. Um, and there was a little bit of hesitation around the team, I have to say, about this idea of uh, merging the subjects, so-called subjects with the keywords. Um, and uh, I think I mitigated those concerns by saying we're keeping the FAST IDs in the terms that had the FAST IDs. So we'll always know that these were taken from FAST. Um, I also brought in some more metadata from FAST, like some of the um, alternative labels that were stored there that hadn't been imported before because we were starting to store synonyms for the first time at APO. Um, and um, once th that merge had been completed, uh, we, I started applying, you know, more thesaurus conventions, making sure that there was a full hierarchy, also associations, uh, cleaning up orphans, terms that had no relationships. There were more synonyms from this process, which was, which was great. And we implemented those in the search engine. Um, more updating of catalogs and um, cataloging forms and guides and so on and so on. Um, I'm going to go through this point a little bit, a little bit more slowly, if I've got time. I think. Um, 
so to to enrich the um the the, the one taxonomy that we had now um I used the uh, the term analysis where we 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 found that we had high use terms, and I, I I targeted those terms to make more matches with fast, and so we used um, a SCOS exact match relationship to those um, fast terms, uh, which we were able to do because we had retained the IDs. Um, but also. Um, there's another vocabulary that was relevant to this project, um, APACE, or the Australian Public Affairs Information Service Thesaurus. This is a, a vocabulary that really is only officially published, if you like, you know, in um, print format. It has not been uh, maintained for some time. But um, one of our partners in the project, which was Australian Data Archive, you may have heard of them, um, was using APACE in its database. And so it made sense to us to, to do some mapping between our taxonomy and APACE. Um, and this was an interesting uh, story because I needed, I wanted a copy of APACE to import into the, res the Research Vocabularies Australia editor. Um, and I had a bit of trouble finding a machine readable copy. I did approach the National Library of Australia, who's, from what I could work out, owned APACE. Um, they told me that I should go and talk to RMIT training because they were managing APACE now. I said, okay, fine. So I went to um, RMIT training and they told me I'd better go back to the National Library of Australia to, um, to get a copy of that. So I, um, I ended up using a, a sort of an unofficial version that I found on the web to, and um, so I pulled that into um, the Research Vocabularies Australia editor and I used that to do the mapping. I'll show you a bit more about how the mapping was done. Um, I also matched terms from our vocab with AGIFT or the Australian Government Interactive Functions Thesaurus, um, which made sense to APA because probably half of our audience was government as well as the other half being a sort of research or, or uh, academic audience. Um, and that was, AGIFT was at the time hosted by the National Archives. Um, and I understand there's a bit of movement as to where AGIFT sits and how it's being managed. So some of those links have probably broken now. Um, also matching with the fields of research codes or these research classifications that we use in Australia. Um, so instead of just having the top level of the terms aligned with the fields of research, we actually made machine readable links to those um, research codes um, for um, all of the high use terms, I guess, in the thesaurus. Uh, all of this work resulted in more synonyms uh, which was wonderful um, and really enriched the thesaurus structure. So there was lots of synonym control. Um, so I had uh, pulled a couple of these vocab external vocabularies into the Research Vocabularies Australia editor, and it has a nice batch linking feature, which means that it can automatically detect um, where there are matches between vocabularies, but also um, makes that detection using um, alternative labels as well as preferred labels. So it's a really neat little feature there. Um, step number five, publish. Um, so the uh, the public policy taxonomy is published at uh, Research Vocabularies Australia uh, in RDF and in all the formats that you would expect to find, I suppose. Um, we set up a Bit of an interesting situation where we have the um, we have the uh, the thesaurus or taxonomy is managed there in pool party. Um, it pushes a version back to Drupal, and when Drupal creates a new taxonomy page, the um, the, the the token that it creates is then copied back into resource research vocabularies Australia. There's a slightly messy manual step there at the end, but it works. Um, the taxonomy is still being maintained, which is which is really good, um, and it's available over a, a you know slightly restrictive um, Creative Commons license. Um, just some quick reflections. Um, I I found it difficult to establish a community of practice for my, for uh, feedback into the public policy taxonomy. 
Um, it's certainly uh, policy is certainly a multi-domain area. It's a very multi-domain area. It's not the whole of knowledge, but it's um, it's an awful lot of things. It's anything that could be governed, I suppose. Um, and while we had some special interest groups, for example, we would had a project de decolonizing the taxonomy. Um, we never really established, uh, I, I think, um, probably a good ongoing source of feedback from the policy community. Um, it's probably something that I would like to have done if I'd stayed in the project longer. Um, 15 minutes, Les, 15 minutes. Thank you. Rules of engagement were unclear, as I think I've indicated, with things like approaching, you know, uh, the National Archives or the National Library or whoever about things like APES and uh, AGIFT and trying to understand, you know, uh, could we, should we work with these vocabularies? How should we, what are the rules? They seem to be a little bit unclear at times. Um, we never actually established proper URIs in for the, um, the public policy taxonomy. We only used the ones that were generated by the software there. Um, it, I was advised, uh, thank you, Rowan, uh, <laughs> by you that I should approach the Australian Government Linked Data Working Group to um, to get that sorted out. I never got that far, although I will say at the time that it, did, it seemed an odd idea to approach a working group about something that would seem to be a service. I've already learned today that there's been some movement in this area, so I think I'm really interested to find out what happens with um, uh, providing a URI service to people working in that environment. Um, and also, yes, consuming the vocabulary back into Drupal, we, we were doing that uh, as using a sort of an open data situation. We had an application to application uh, uh, connection, which is a little bit of a non-standard thing to do, um, which is, is, is not, I suppose in a sense, it's not great because if I was ever asked, you know, how should I integrate this with a system? I didn't have a very good example to, to, to point out. Um, okay, thanks, Ryan. I'm finished.